Yo, what's up, Mr. Murphs? What's good, my man? What's good, Cool B? What's cracking? Yeah, I'm good, brother. I'm good, man. This grinding is getting it going. You dig? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. How was the uh, How was the weekend, man? It was all right. It was just busy. Um, there's a lot of rain that we've been having over here. It's been kind of like having these a lot of uh, short storms, man. It's been raining on and off, on and off, and the weather's been in the 40s, so it's just kind of cold out here in Cali right now. You know? Cali? Rain? Cold? Yeah. yeah, I know. That harp, man. They playing with that harp. <laughs> yeah, that's it. that's yeah. another show right there, man. <laughs> Damn, man. They fucking play with the weather for one day here, man. Uh, we had one day last week in Atlanta. It was 77 degrees, bro. I mean, people were busting out in shorts. The girls had the sundresses on. I mean, it was looking real good for one day. And one day. Freezing cold. <laughs> That's it crazy, one man. Day. One day. So, um, shout outs to the Harp, uh, the people at Harp, man. Y'all, 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 y'all really keeping us guessing out there. <laughs> so, but anyways, man. You know, it's episode uh, number six. Yes. Uh, then Radio Cast. I'm your host, Mr. Mercy. I'm your man, Cool Breeze. It's Sin Radio Cast, man. Episode six, man. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go into this title. And uh, today's title is called, uh, it's titled in a question form, rather. Uh, and the title is, Is Traditionalism Holding Us Back? Wow. It's a good title, man. Yeah, I, I think it's uh it's something we definitely need to touch on, uh, because I'm just been observing things that's been going on out there in the world, and and I'm just I'm just noticing the world is changing, but there's certain things and uh, ideals and there's just certain things that we practice in our community in particular mm -hmm. that aren't changing, and I think some of the views should change. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so um, why don't you define what traditionalism is? Well, um, I got a basic, just kind of a basic definition of what traditionalism is. Mm -hmm. And traditionalism is simply uh, upholding or maintenance of tradition, especially so as to resist change. Right. Okay. And that's a very basic, you know, skeleton a definition of traditionalism okay mm. and it's it's peculiar because I, like i just said the world is changing and tradition from that definition is there to resist change okay mm. so yeah go ahead man no well you know um to to go to piggyback off of what you said about the whole thing with tradition, I just think that um, and to go with the title, I just think that certain traditions are definitely holding us back, and you know certain things that may have worked for our parents, our grandparents, will definitely won't work for us. I think that certain things that they instilled like, you know, uh, hard work, respect, dedication, and things of that nature. Those are things I feel can carry over, but just the way they lived certain things or lived their lives and did things a certain way back then, you can't say that those things are going to work now because it's just a different time, it's just a different day, and it's a different age. So things are going to change. So things are naturally not going to be the same. So I think that you have to kind of adjust to how the times are now. And if you don't, certain things are going to just kind of pass you by. Or it's going to be harder for you to kind of grasp certain things or move in a certain manner if you don't try to uh, adjust to how things are moving. And that's for anybody. If you're an older person and and certain things are kind of hard for you, you know, you're just going to have to adjust or you just won't get it, you know? That's that's life, man. That's just life in general change. And, um, you know, I was just kind of really thinking about this because I'm, I'm looking at the whole school system, mm -hmm. uh, 
public school system in America is really failing our youth. Uh, one of the worst, one of the worst grade um, averages in the world, as far as for, uh, first world nations are concerned, the United States educational system right now ranks near the bottom. Wow, it's crazy. It, it's really sad. And I was just thinking like, how many people are uh, brought up to go to, to, to the public school or sometimes in some cases, if the, the, the parent has the funds, uh, private school, you know, right. which are definitely a step up from the public school. But, you know, there's been a, a new wave of people that are looking to now homeschool their children. Mm. And a lot of people uh, that are against homeschooling, they kind of have a very basic argument uh, for why their children should not be going to, uh, why their children should be going to school as opposed to being homeschooled. And one of those reasons is uh, the teachers, the public school system that is, teaches the children how to socialize. But in my personal opinion, that doesn't really hold too much weight because I know children, if you take a child to a playground, they're gonna socialize. Right. So I don't feel that a public school setting is this perfect scenario for children to socialize. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of these children are socializing with children that the parents don't know what the parents are teaching those children. And then you, you, you notice your child comes home speaking a certain type of way, uh, using a uh, language that might not be hmm. the language spoken in the house. So, you know, traditionalism tells us to send our kids to school, you know, uh, get good grades, nothing wrong with that but homeschooling is there and that's an option. Right. And I feel like a lot of parents are not really looking into this option based on tradition. I think I, I agree. I, I feel that, um, you know, a lot of parents are just accustomed just to sending their kids to school. And then it's just like the school is the kid's parent, you know? They send them to school to learn certain things, and it's like you learn in these things, but then you come home. It's like, are you working as a parent? Are you working with the kid outside of school? Because education is just not when you're when your child is at school. Education starts when they're born. Education starts at home. Everything starts at home. And then when they go into school, you have to work with them and make sure they're on point with their homework and their schoolwork and they and that they grasp the information. And on the weekend, you know, don't just sit at home with your kid, take them to museums or you know, go to parks or whatever the case may be, because the education doesn't stop. But I feel like the whole homeschooling thing, and I've met parents who homeschool their kids, and their kids are so far advanced more so than some of the kids who are going to these traditional schools or better yet, private school. Now, I met a woman um, a few months back and she take, well, her son is homeschooled. He's about 15 years old and he's homeschooled. But the way she broke it down to how he goes to his schooling at home, it's pretty much, it's just a very loose schedule, you know? One day right. he might be focusing on English. The next day he might be focusing on math. The following day they might go to a museum or whatever the case may be, and he's writing papers about what he saw. So it, every day it's a, it's a different curriculum. And also, um, every every few months out of the year, maybe they'll go on, on a trip, maybe like um, somewhere in the States and then somewhere out of the country. And then, you know, that's helping him to understand different cultures, understand different foods, and he's writing papers on these things. So now, a 15-year-old is taking college courses or prep, prep courses for college, and he's getting accepted letters and things like that, or letters of, of interest from these schools, and he's doing tours and stuff at 15 years old. So he would be finish his homeschooling and preparing for college at around 16, 17, 16, 17 years old, preparing to go into college. Mm. Well, nice. 
I, I, that's that's definitely something that I've been hearing a lot yeah. from people that are homeschooling their children is how advanced they are. A lot of these kids are actually graduating early, uh, sometimes yeah. one to two years earlier than uh, the, the their age. Right. So I definitely feel that that's something that parents that and you know all parents don't have the uh, means to homeschool. You know you have a lot of single parents out there that. Uh, this would be very difficult for them to pull off. Right. But all the parents that do have the means, I think homeschooling is definitely something we need to start looking at to um, into a little bit more. And it's and, and while we're on the, the the subject of school, you said something about college. Yeah. And that's another thing that I feel uh, is something that we are taught traditionally to do. Nothing wrong with going to college. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm nothing wrong with it at all. I don't, you know, I'm not against college or anything like that. Uh, but what I, I am against is uh, parents acting as if college is the only way to go about being successful. And, and that to me is a, that's a big no, no. Uh, mm -hmm. Traditionally people are told that, you know, you get a college, you go, you, you get a, um, a high school diploma, you get a degree, you get a career. Mm -hmm. uh, but in today's age, um, day and age, uh, with tuition prices um, actually skyrocketing, going through the roof, um, and these student loans that are lingering over people's heads uh, many years after they've uh, completed their curriculums and school and high education, I'm asking uh, all the listeners out there that's viewing this, I mean, you don't feel that some of this needs to change? Some uh, the the view of just going to college is the rite of passage. We don't feel like this should be kind of altered a little bit. Um, we should not be just leaving this as the end all be all. I'm sure we'll be looking into the fact that, you know, your child could go out there and take up a trade or your child can go out there and become an entrepreneur right out the gate, uh, take a loan out uh, for a business because see a business loan can be forgiven. Mm -hmm. A student loan, good luck with that. And the thing about that, with those student loans, some people have loans upwards into the six figures, man, $100,000, $120,000. And I'm like, how can certain people pay that loan off in this lifetime, you know? And it's like, it's, it's sort of like a trap, you know? It's, 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 it's sort of like a trap, but well, they're quick to lend you this money to get this education, but it's like you get this education, and it's like, well, we gave you this education, and you took out these loans. So as soon as you sign for this education, you're automatically being put in debt for X amount of money, whatever your tuition is. And tuition is not cheap. Some some schools are uh, their tuition is like twenty thousand dollars a semester, or whatever the case may be. And I was like, yo, dude, that adds up. So it's like, you know, there are other options outside of going to college and, 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 and taking out these loans and stuff like that. There's always options. But I think that we have been taught traditionally, graduate from high school, go into college. That's good and all, but my thing is that they don't tell you about some of the pitfalls when you're going to college about these money problems, even about, even when you have um, some of these credit card companies standing outside of the university, signing you off for these credit cards with these high ass interest rates on there and people line up, oh, okay, and sign off, sign off, sign off. And they get these people to sign off to get these credit cards left and right. But you don't look at the fine print. You don't look at what the um, interest rates are on the cards. Don't get me wrong, I was one of those people at, at one point <laughs> who actually had one of those credit cards. And thankfully, years later, I, after I paid those, um, well, that particular bill off, but it was just like, you know, you get these statements and, and the interest rates. And I'm like, wait a second, I thought I paid this amount off. And you look at it, but oh, okay, well, that was just this part. That was just this interest. I have to pay off the interest first, and then you have to pay off what the actual, yeah, exactly.
So I'm just like, you know, they don't really tell you about this. And, and the funny thing about it is a lot of people's parents don't know about it. You know, they just think that the American dream is to get this degree. But nowadays, you know, the degree doesn't even really hold as much weight as it used to back in the day. And, you know, you can even look at certain companies like um, I read at Google now, they are accepting people without college degrees, where it's it's like you have to um, you know you have to take a test or something. Of course, right. Google, right, but now you don't even need a degree to do that now. And this is the company that stated this. So it's like, you know, a lot of things are changing. And you just have to kind of keep up with the times, man. And if not, you're going to get left behind. That That's excellent points right there, man. Now, I also want to touch on uh, something else that we uh, do by tradition, uh, something we don't really question. And this actually came up in uh, the documentary that we mentioned in the last show, which mm. is In Home Banking uh, by Derek Grace the Third or Second, rather. I think it's the second. And, Derek Grace the second, yeah. And for anybody that haven't checked that out, you know, go check out In Home Banking documentary. Like I said, uh, kudos to the brother. Uh, did a great job and came up with an excellent concept, which is I'm not even going to say it's even a new concept. It's something we used to do. The early Americans used to do uh, mm -hmm. with each other. And um, he mentioned that traditionalism is why many of us. Uh, still go to banks to deposit our money. And mm. he explained that really, we don't really need the banks. <laughs> you really don't need them. Mm -hmm. um, you, can, you can bank privately amongst friends, uh, relatives, and actually, you can actually um, be, you be able to actually grow some money relatively faster than if you had it in some of these banking institutions. But like the brother said, we are so programmed to just run to the bank to put our money in there without really thinking, like, do we really even need the bank in the first place? Yeah. We cut out the man and go direct. Yeah, I, I think that, as you said, we're programmed and conditioned to believe a lot of these things that are out here in the world. And we don't stop and think and question a lot of these things and I, and I just think that we don't as a as a whole don't stop and question a lot of things you know if you see something that's been happening and you know you, you just been accustomed to it you know it's just some it's hard for some people to break out of that that um that trap or that box right you know so, you know, it, it only takes one person to kind of say, wait a second, or it takes a second to stop and question something before you make a judgment or before you give a quick action to something. Most people don't take that second to stop and think. And that's with anything. You know, some people jump to conclusions sometimes or some people, um, you know, want to get angry about something or, you know, or, I want to point the finger at somebody. And that's how a lot of people get kind of caught up in situations or just um, just making bad judgment calls, you know? So it's always good to stop, um, think about certain things. And another thing a lot of people don't do is a lot of people just don't read. A lot of people want to just... I was actually going to say, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't study the history of mm -hmm. the institutions, that they subscribe to, yep. Uh, whether it be religious, whether it be banking institutions, whether it be medical institutions, mm -hmm. uh, one of the the greatest things you can do is do your due diligence and do the history mm -hmm. on some of these places that you traditionally frequent, right. and you will find some disturbing trends amongst many of them. And yeah. you probably think twice about just blindly going into these establishments and uh, actually giving them business. Right. Because if you the history of the banking institution, it's not the greatest reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, the schools that you go to, if you look go back, uh, you know maybe a hundred years, and do a little research on the school that you might be going to, you might be a little disturbed that some of the things might 
that might have transpired at your school or your school might have been known for up until a certain point. So right. really, yeah. diligence is really um, something that can, you know, bring us out of traditionalism with certain things. And I'm not saying all tradition is bad. We're just talking on certain things that, you know, need to maybe need to be changed up as far as we're, we're concerned, as far as moving forward and um, getting the best out of life. Some of these things I just feel like uh, we definitely need to take a, a, little, uh, a little second look at and maybe dissect it a little bit more, and then we can come to the determination that, hey, uh, maybe we should move on from this, or uh, we will we'll still continue to do this, you know? Yeah. Pick a true battles. Yeah, I think, you know, it, it only hurts us and or hinders us if we don't do what we're supposed to do and, and follow up and just kind of ask questions and, you know, I always say question everything, you know? So if you don't have questions for certain things or, you know, um, we're just moving in a certain light, definitely, you know, it, it, it can definitely hurt you in the long run. So, and if you don't know something, look it up or ask people, you know, or just try to find people who work or who are just knowledgeable about certain things that can help you out. Is is nothing wrong with asking for help. There's nothing wrong with picking up a book and reading, you know, and, and don't be afraid. Just go out there and um, if, you, if you're unsure about something, don't be embarrassed about it because, you know, it, it'll only, as I said, hinder you if you don't. So, you know, it's just definitely important to kind of stay on top of these things. Yeah, for sure, man. And, um, you know, I got some more examples of, of, of this traditionalism and right. some things it, that we definitely need to, uh, you know, take a second look at. Uh, let's, I mean, let's talk about the music business. All right. uh, you know, I still hear people talking about getting signed. I mean, hmm. why are you still trying to get signed? I, I, I just don't get the artists. You got so many <laughs> artists that are out here have their own brand and they have their own people. Uh, shout out to uh, my man out from Memphis, Young Dolph, who mm -hmm. I really feel is really doing the damn thing. I don't think he really gets the uh, respect he deserves for being totally independent and actually turning down a lot of these um, major label offers. Um, you know, traditionalism is, is running out, uh, doing a, a few songs and or maybe doing several hundred songs or whatever and then you know shopping into a label which doesn't really work anymore because uh labels want to see that you're actually selling already but the whole thing is you got so many artists that have a, a great buzz uh, i look at like a drake for instance um mm. look at drake like do people realize that when drake first came out you know drake was actually getting played on the radio with like no record deal I mean, mm. that was unheard of. I and mean, we're not talking about one record. We're talking about like maybe three, four records before he actually signed with Young Money Cash Money. Mm. Really, yeah. Looking back in hindsight, do you think Drake might have held himself back signing that deal? Or, you know, did he do it to piggyback off of Lil Wayne who already had an established fan base because mm. to me he didn't really have to do that he didn't really have to you know he was doing something amazing already and if had he done it independently i think drake would actually be even you know you know the, the fortune would be even greater i mean drake is not a uh, starving for money by any means he's done his thing but i'm just i'm just thinking like you know you were getting airplay with no deal bro i mean right that was powerful yeah, um, I mean, he definitely had a good come up. And, um, you know, yeah, I believe that Drake, he believed in himself that, you know, and he took a chance. He said, you know what, I, I don't need to get signed right now. Let me just create a bigger buzz. So if I can create this bigger buzz, and people know who I am, then maybe I can demand more instead of just coming out the gate and people don't really know who I am and somebody say, hey, I'm going to sign you and, you, and you're taking the least amount. 
you know, because now this guy Drake, he's a, he's a worldwide phenomenon, man. You know, he comes out with new songs every other week. He's doing a bunch of collabos. He has uh, a bunch of different things like um, nightclubs and all of this stuff. You know, and, and he had a vision and he stuck to his vision and he kept moving forward and, you know, the rest is history. Yeah, but I think, I still think he could have made more money doing it independently. It might have been a, a little more of a grind. Right. It's definitely hard to work, but I think the returns would have been greater. And I think, again, traditionalism, you know, traditionally you uh, sign to a, a bigger entity and you kind of piggyback off of that entity's um, platform. So, I mean, like I said, he, 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 he still was successful, but it just makes me wonder sometimes. Had Jake been 100% independent, uh, like a young Dolph, uh, I think he could have done some really, really even, even more extraordinary things that he's already than more than what he's already done. Is what I'm okay. Hmm. I'm yeah. right away. Yeah, man. So, show topic, man, is traditionalism holding us back? Hmm. Mm, it's interesting now, things, man. I can think of, man. How about how, let's let's throw one out there. How about marriage? Okay. You know, with the with the Magtow movement, you know, and the Me Too movements, and looking at how the laws are tailored and in the favor of women, and okay, you know, is that something that? you know, traditionally might need to be altered a little bit. <laughs> well, some people might not know what MAGTOW is, so why don't you tell them what MAGTOW is? <laughs> well, MAGTOW is a, is, a, is a, I guess it's an online community from what I understand, and it stands for men going about things their own way. Okay. And a lot of these brothers, uh, they're not crazy about the opposite sex as far as, you know, getting married to them. Mm -hmm. And there are some points there. I'm not even going to knock these guys because there are really valid points that they're making. Uh, all mm -hmm. these points I don't agree with, but there are some that I do agree with as mm -hmm. far as like a man getting married to a woman after he's amassed a certain amount of wealth and then them getting divorced and then this woman is now entitled to half of his estate. Now, I know there's ways around that, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of those guys might not know, but there's a lot of ways around that to protect your, your assets or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the things that they're saying, they do have points uh, mm -hmm. about, you know, some of their concerns. Right. Uh, so, you know, if you guys want to, you know, check out more about the MAGTOW, you can go on, on YouTube and Google it. I mean, you'll see... Uh, you know, hundreds of videos on it. So you can get yourself more familiar with that. But it's, you know, back to the marriage thing. I just kind of want to touch on that. You know, okay. the additional aspect of of marriage, you, you're thinking of a man and his wife. You're thinking of a monogamous relationship in marriage. But right. you're going to start noticing uh, polygamy is now starting to bubble below the surface, you're starting to see a lot more people be more open to polygamy. Mm. And yeah, I know a lot of the folks that are religious and um, come from primarily a, a Christian background because in, in Islam and a lot of other religions, polygamy is practiced. Uh, and polygamy is all up in the Bible, all up in there, you know, can't deny that. Uh, the Christians will try to say it's Old Testament and all this uh, nonsense to try to get around it, but it's it's in there. And I feel like in today's world, looking right. at the ratio of women to men in a city like Atlanta, where uh, you have a lot of brothers that are not straight, they, um, they're part of the LGBT uh, community, you got a lot of uh, brothers that are transsexual, you got a lot of brothers that are bisexual. So mm. there's a really smaller uh, gene pool for the for the men out there, for the women who just want a, a, a monogamous relationship. Right. So 
what I'm saying is, is traditionalism holding us back in marriage? Uh, are we turning the blind eye to one form of marriage and not giving any light to this other style of marriage due to the fact that we don't really understand it? You know, that's what I, that's what I'm you know pondering on. Because I, I'm, I'm before you even say anything, I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. The reason why this, this even came up was I was watching a, a video with a guy who was in a, uh, what is a, what is called a triad. Okay. A, a polygamous relationship. Um, it can it can be different variations of it. It could be three women, could be three men. It could be uh, two men and one woman, or it could be one man and two women. And this gentleman was in a in a relationship with two other women. And this guy was prior to this relationship, he was in a monogamous marriage. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out. He got divorced and him and the the woman he was married to, I mean, they're no longer talking. And mm -hmm. he was just saying that he was in that situation because traditionally he was taught that you get married to one person, you're with that person for the rest of your life, yada, yada, yada. And then mm -hmm. he breaks up he has a few kids with that person before he breaks up okay. and he's in a new situation with his new girl and then they decide to incorporate another woman into this relationship and now he's like amazed like wow this works i mean i was mm -hmm. never taught this growing up but he's like like this works for me but traditionally i was taught the other way but yet i'm seeing this and I would never have thought this would have worked. Right. Well, I mean, I think that those type of relationships have been happening. But now we're in 2019, you know, you will start to hear about these situations and relationships more so than not. Right. Now, you got to look at the times we live in. This is the millennium, how do you pronounce it? Millenniums. Mill Millennium. I can't even say it. <laughs> Millennium. Millennium. <laughs> right. Oh, I got tongue tied. Um, they call them the Generation Y or Gen Y. And um, the thing about them is that they want everything now. They're, they're, I think they're really pushing the bar as far as, you know, I want to be different. So they're like, okay, well, just be different. But they're like, no, we're going to be different. We're going to do things this way. We're going to do it the way we want to do it. And, um, you know, it's just, I'm not saying it's a, it's a good or a bad thing. I just think that, you know, I really think with this next generation, I think that um, they are, are not afraid, you know. They're not afraid to go out and if they see something they want to to do they're gonna go out and do it the only thing about it is i feel is there's nothing wrong with going out and and you know and if you were destined to do something or you're, or you're pushing or pursuing to do something go and do it but just don't be reckless when it comes to certain things you know just stop and think about what you're doing before you go out and do it and that's my only thing because as i said you know the world is a forever changing place so you have to kind of preserve what's going on on this planet as well and you know, take care of it and, and do all the right things you know for some of the people who were here before you that kind of held certain things down you know you always have to be respectful of of those who came before you you know they may be a little bit different from you but just keep in mind that you know there's always that respect that line of respect. So, and I think that comes with having a conversation, being open to talking about certain things and not being afraid. You know, I think that's where a lot of things kind of kind of fall short. You know, sometimes the new generation or you know the millennials, if I'm saying it right. Millennial, millennial. I don't know why. I'm, I, I know the word. I, you know why I'm saying that, man, but. Um, you know, I just think that um, they're, 
You know, I just think that conversations need to be had. You know, I think sometimes some of the older people are not in touch as much, but then some of the, the younger people are in a situation where, well, I don't have to listen to you because what can I learn from you because you're old? I'm like, no, yeah, you can learn a lot from somebody because they've been through certain obstacles that you can avoid or pitfall that you can avoid. So I just think that it, it should be conversations that, that should be had, you know? And don't be afraid of somebody because they look a little bit different than you. You know, everybody's story is a different story. So I think that, um, yeah, just, just open up your mouth and, and have a conversation, you know? 100%, 100%. Now, I want to touch on something else that I've noticed um, people do traditionally. Uh, uh, this is in respect to um, child support. Mm. Child support, yes, child support. Let's talk about it. Um, traditionally, uh, in these situations, uh, what happens is the, the, the parents of the child are no longer in good terms, mm -hmm. um, decided that they're, they're not gonna work together and they go back their separate ways and obviously they have this child that right. they now both have to take care of. Mm -hmm. Now, traditionally, a woman is told to go to the court, take out child support, or if the woman doesn't wanna put the man on child support but she wants benefits, She's forced to put the, the man on child support mm. uh, when she is receiving benefits from the state. Right. Okay. Now, a lot of folks aren't aware of this, but you do not need to put your child on, um, child's father rather, on, on child support. You don't even have to do that, ladies. Mm. A lot of y'all running out here, y'all just quick to just quick to do shit and not do your goddamn research mm. and you're sitting up here putting a guy that just because your relationship didn't work out you're putting him in the in a financial bind mm. right when really and 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 this is not always just the women it'd be the men too because a lot of y'all are reckless with your shit running out there just willy-nilly with your shit and mm. then you wonder why you're getting you know, you're getting the staff up your behind is because you're making poor decisions. But right. the point I'm trying to make is you do not need to go to court to have a payment set up mm -hmm. for support for a child. Right. Many of y'all don't know that you can simply draft up a private agreement mm -hmm. between you, whether you be the father or the mother, between the two parents. And you right. can actually bring a lawyer each E.g., y'all can have a lawyer that can iron out the, the terms and conditions of this contract and have y'all sign off on it once everything is good and everybody's in agreement, right? right? Why? Why? Why is this important? Because the reason it's important is simple. When you go to court and you take your child's father to court without a private contract in place, right? the court views you as a ward of the court, mm. okay? Now I'm gonna define to you real quick what a ward of the court is, okay? And this is why you guys need to step your shit up, okay? You step the shit up, mothers and fathers. Right. Definition, um, a person, usually a minor or of unsound mind for whom a guardian has to be appointed by a court or who has become directly subject to the authority of that court. That's what a ward of the court is. In other words, they view you as two fucking children. Mm. Two damn children that cannot iron out your differences. Okay? You're of unsound mind. So since you two are a bunch of children with unsound minds, we're going to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. we're going to tell you what to do. We're going to be your guardian for your two little kids. Because even though you have a child, you're both acting like children. Right. So now I'm going to tell you what to do. See, a lot of y'all don't know that. 
But if you had a private contract in place, oh, different story. The judge is no longer a judge, turns into a mediator. Mm -hmm. Because all he has to do now is look over the contract and enforce what's in the contract. Right, yeah. And then gray areas you might have, the judge may see it upon himself to, you know, straighten out the gray area. But right. the areas that are covered, he's only going to enforce. So you, pretty much you're moving the judge out of a, from one position to the next. Yeah. In one position, you're going to run it to him. He's your guardian. He tells you what to do. In the other situation, he's looking at the contract and he's enforcing what both of you said you're going to do. Right. Which shows yeah. what that you are of sound mind. <laughs> education, yeah. education, education. And uh, unfortunately, many of you do not know this. And I'm trying to put this out there for y'all because a lot of y'all wasting your time. Y'all wasting um, days off. You're wasting, you know, the court's time. And it's just, we just don't have time for this bullshit in 2019. Nope. You know, so I, I, this, yeah. the private attorney, sit down with your partner. You know that kid is coming. Just, and you should do this not when you're on bad terms. You should do this right away after you found out that your, your woman is pregnant. You need to do this right away. Mm -hmm. You need to do it right away. Because men, if you sit out there and you you wait, and let's say you and this lady's not together, then she's not going to do it. <laughs> so this should be brought up right up front. Get it out the way. Get it ironed out. Get that private agreement in place. They cannot tell you you can't do you have a You have an unlimited right to contract. Right. Nobody you can't contract. Contracts cannot be regulated. You can sign a private contract with anybody. Okay. Hence why you could do in home banking, private contracts. Yeah. So in that realm, traditionalism needs to be needs to change in that in that scenario right there. I mean, I'm tired of this shit, man. It's, it's just out of control at this point. I mean, right. we just gotta stop this this vicious cycle. You know, you got guys gotta start acting like damn adults out there, man. You know, it's 2019, man. So, yeah, it's traditional uh, traditionalism holding us back is the, is the title of the show. Um, anything you want to touch on, um, Cool B? And as no, far as traditionalism, no, we can be changing up. Um, you know, I, I just think that people just have to kind of realize and open up their eyes that, um, you know, traditionalism doesn't always work now, as I stated many, many times in this show, you know, because, um, you know, uh, there was a tradition many, many years ago in this country where, you know, um, blacks were getting hung left and right. You know, that was a tradition. And you had um, racists who would actually sit and take pictures with black people hanging. That was a tradition here in America. So, you know, and um, so I, I look at, so I look at things like that. And where sometimes people say, you know, well, this is a tradition, but whose tradition is this? You know, and just because it was a tradition doesn't necessarily mean that I need to follow behind this or do certain things that way because all traditions were not good traditions, you know? Yeah. And that's where I'm going to leave off at. You know, um, I just want to say to the listeners, this is our sixth show. Um, you know, a lot of people are supporting and a lot of people are, you know, telling us to keep it going and keep it moving. And, you know, to all our listeners around the world, thank you. Subscribe to us, leave comments in the feed. You know, we're going to keep coming with more more um, topics and, and, you know, anything that anybody can relate to. No matter what your background is, no matter where you live, you know, this is uh, Sin Radio Cash, Strength in Numbers, and we're definitely going to be bringing you the heat. So, so we want to thank you guys and, and, and ladies out there for um, supporting us and, and giving us good feedback and things like that. and and subscribing to our channel. So, Mr. Merce. Salute. Yeah. Salute. And before we go, man, um, 
like I said, tradition is always important, and we're not knocking tradition. No, not at all. Traditions that I, I definitely uphold. I'm from the Caribbean. There's certain traditions we have that I wouldn't change for the world. Right. Uh, this is just for certain things that we are following, tr certain traditions that we need to seriously reconsider. Um, some of the traditions we need to kind of upgrade with the time, mm -hmm. so maybe alter a little bit. And I think the world would be a better place if we uh, make some of these adjustments periodically to some of these things that may no longer um, be effective. Right. Mm -hmm. So, man, um, episode six uh, in the books. Uh, cool B, yo, um, just thanks for taking the time out to build with me. All the oh, listeners, definitely. bro. You know, thanks for tuning in, just hearing what we have to talk about. Feel free to chime in. As we grow, uh, definitely going to be doing some live stuff. Definitely want to hear from the listeners and, 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 and just kind of want to hear what you guys' takes is on it because it's always interesting to hear multiple people's takes besides just us two. And we're oh, definitely yeah, sure. going to get to that. And we just like to see where the listeners are coming from. And, you know, shout outs to y'all, man. Just keep rocking with us and we're just going to keep bringing you that is a man. And uh, on that note, I'm getting ready to sign off. Mr. Mercy. Your man, Cool Breeze. And this is Sin Radio Cast, episode number six in the books. Peace. <laughs>